Welcome, Catherine. Thank you, James. Glad to be here. Thanks for joining me. Um, as we normally do with, with, with these sessions, we start with a, a quick intro to yourself and who you re represent, if you don't mind. Yeah, so my name is Catherine Kalamidis. I work for the Rotterdam Partners Convention Bureau, um, focusing on the acquisition of Congresses. Um, I have a long background in the events industry, so I started out in corporate events, maritime, of course, Rotterdam, uh, and then shifted to the European Space Agency, where I led the conference bureau there for 11 years. And I've been with Rotterdam Partners for almost five years now. Okay, and I guess the obvious place to start is what, what is the current situation out there in Rotterdam? Well, um, not, not different from the, the rest of Europe, I think. I mean, there are slight differences uh, between countries and, and uh, no differences between the cities here in the Netherlands uh, in the sense that we all have the same uh, rules applied to how we can meet. Currently, it's uh, 30 persons per room uh, with social distancing measures. And uh, we are all more or less just in a holding pattern uh, to see when, um, when will that open up. And I think we're all very aware of the fact that that's according to things beyond our control. So, I think, I think for, for, for myself personally and, and, and sort of within the agency, we, we very much became more aware of, of Rotterdam in sort of over the past sort of 12 to 18 months, particularly with the Eurostar giving us great access from the UK to, to, to come out to, 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 to the destination. So, um, which, which is a fantastic link to have. You don't just have to fly. Um, what, what sort of things can we look to expect, hopefully moving forward when all things are gradually starting to open up again? Now, it's good that you mentioned that because, I, um, you know, when we talk about marketing a city, we very often talk about the USPs um, and you do see that from city to city, the USPs are very, very similar. Um, so, yeah, we have the three purpose built convention centers. Uh, we have, um, you know, 9000 plus hotel rooms in the region, um, but also accessibility um, is really, really good to Rotterdam. Eurostar is part of that, but it's actually a really important part of it in the sense that um, as we move into the sort of hybrid future that we are anticipating will come, the idea of creating a regional hub um, or a conference with a regional perspective is going to be one of the things that we can really cater to uh, because of the accessibility via our central station. Our central station is an international train station and we have um, direct trains coming in from London, Paris, Antwerp, Brussels, um, also, Frankfurt, it's not direct, it does change once, but in 2025, there will be a direct train to Aachen in Germany, and that will serve as a hub to other German cities. So uh, if you were to put us in the middle of that map and consider the, the cluster that surrounds it, whether it's the, the knowledge institutes, the industrial clusters, the, the harbors, the ports, because of course we're a port city, uh, you're, you're really in the heart of Europe with easy access for people to comfortably travel. Um, and feel safe as well. I do know from the beginning of the process, I, I did talk to the colleagues at Eurostar and at Thalys, so that's the, the, the train coming in from France, um, and was aware of all the steps that they were taking, and it, it seemed more than sufficient to me as well, so that people would still be able to feel safe traveling, even in, in difficult times as we've had in recent months. In, ter in terms of a destination itself, the city, um, what, what type of things can our clients uh, and event professionals expect from Rotterdam? I mean, you know, is it more sort of a conference-led destination? It, does it lend itself well to incentives? What type of character can we expect? I think both, in fact. Uh, speaking to the, to the incentive side, the city has a very interesting uh, landscape that's developing. I very often say it's an experiential city. It, it doesn't communicate as well on paper <clears throat> probably as other cities do. But once you're here and you experience the vibe in the city, and, and that's communicated in all ways. It's, it's not just in the people that you encounter on the street. Um, and, and specifically, it's good for people to know that the Netherlands is, I think, uh, number one in the world as a um, nation speaking English as a second language. And within the Netherlands, Rotterdam is number one. So we are the best in the world. I'm a native English speaker, so I know I don't count, but my colleagues are also all fluent. All of our partners are fluent. Um, English is widely spoken here. But also in the, in the buildings, in the services, in the water taxi rides, um, we have really, really fantastic, exciting architecture in the city. It's, it's all very compelling and, and exciting to see. So you need to be here to experience it. And you should definitely not write the city off as just another port city. We are the largest port in Europe. 
we're also the smartest port in the world. So it's super high tech. And you, you see that reflected back everywhere. Um, lots of interesting activities for incentives. But also for Congresses, um, the, it, I always say it's a little big city. It feels big. I grew up in New York, so I know what a big city is. And I don't really miss anything here. I know it seems strange to say, but this is a little big city. It's compact. It's easy to get around. You can literally walk from one end of it to the other uh, within a reasonable amount of time. Um, the two convention centers in the city center have more than enough hotel rooms within a five minute walk of the conference center. The uh, things that are attractive and interesting to see are all within walking distance. The largest conference center, which is at Ahoy, Rotterdam Ahoy, that is, uh, let's just say, on one end of the metro line. That metro line is super significant because from Central Station to Ahoy is 12 minutes and seven stops. It's not a lot. Having grown up with the New York City subway system, <laughs> it's definitely not a lot. It's a straight line. Uh, there are hotels at every single stop. And more importantly, that subway line, it goes all the way to the Hague Central Station. So the, the connectivity is fantastic. It's something that this region of the Netherlands has done incredibly well. You know, when they focus on mobility, they, they figured out how to make it work for the people who, who live here and people who come to visit. And it's one of, our strong, one of our strong suits. So we have a number of top sectors, especially if we're talking about the Congresses, that we're really, really good at. And we have a number of themes that we're focusing on to develop for the future. So future mobility is one of them. Uh, future digitalization is another. Future health. Our, our hospital here is a cornerstone of the Dutch medical delta. And um, it's the largest single institute in the Netherlands. It's also the place where the COVID response is being coordinated. So we have a lot of confidence in our sectors here. That's great. Uh, it's, it's amazing to find out such, such things. So it's obviously been a, a challenging year for everybody. Um, how have you found it in terms of working with your partners there? Well, I'll say in the, in the first wave, it was really difficult. You know, we, we are all very, very close to our subject matter. You know, we, we're very committed. We're very involved. Most of the people within the events industry chain here actually live here in the city. So we, we take it very personally. <laughs> uh, so there were a lot of hard conversations in the beginning, us reaching out to our partners to hear how it was going. We, we were with them every step of the way as they were making the difficult decisions that was beyond their control. Um, and some of them had a harder time than others, but they're all holding on. Just yesterday, we had our, our partner meeting. Normally, we would have all gotten together in a bright, sunny garden with drinks. Um, this was all done virtually. We did it uh, on a platform provided by um, Venture Cafe, which is an offshoot of the Cambridge Innovation Center that's seated here in Rotterdam. Um, and what we did was we asked them to just take the stage and tell us about their points of light. What were the good things that have happened in this time? Because we don't want to focus on the negative. This is beyond our control. All we can do is take advantage of the opportunity to focus on skills and, and being creative and, and preparing for when the last wave is done um, and that we can move forward into that new world that we are anticipating. It's great to see that open discussion sort of, sort of happening, particularly within destinations with suppliers. Um, so has that led to sort of any future plans or initiatives that, that are coming to the front? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, going back to the partners, the, the convention centers are all anticipating having studios or have already built studios or have uh, very short lines with providers of studio services so that you can easily pivot as a client. Let's say you have selected to come to Rotterdam and you're in any of the venues um, that have this service. Uh, should you need to pivot to a, um, a fully virtual event, um, you can. Or if you and that's what we think is going to happen. If your future Congress is going to be live with a healthy virtual element to it, we can, we can accommodate that here. In addition, we have infrastructure already in existence, which is being enhanced now. So for example, we have something called Media Ring Rotterdam, and that is a, a, um, a fiber connection among a very large number of venues in the city. Um, because it all connects to the internet gateway, which is here in Rotterdam. We have, a, we have an internet gateway here. And there is a connection possible with the Netherlands television city, which is in the north of the country for broadcasting. So that kind of infrastructure is already there. Thank goodness it's already there. Um, and we can build on that. Uh, and, and, and we're very grateful that, that it's already there. And we're working with some of our partners also to, to make sure that whoever is not connected to that yet is going to be connected to it. 
and we think that that's crucial. Interesting to note is that that, uh, that service is in existence for a very long time, and uh, part of it is also related to our film festival, which is, which is something that is an annual event uh, coming on 50 years and, um, and connecting many, many venues in the city in order to put on an international film festival. So, so we see those kinds of changes already um, taking place or already completed. Um, and we, we just continue to build on it. We're also keeping our partners apprised of um, possibilities for uh, certification in terms of hygiene, um, service providers, you know, outside the box that are providing solutions, interim solutions for the period of time when we start to regather, um, because we don't know what the end result is going to look like. But we're, we're trying to keep everybody up to date. Sounds fantastic. So we, we're finding out, obviously, with most destinations, that, that there is obviously a huge swing towards virtual and hybrid events. That's obviously going to be the way forward to start with before we can fully get back to live events. Uh, but it seems to me that, that, that Rotterdam is very much ahead of the curve, as almost ready and waiting for it, and have the infrastructure in place to sort of be able to facilitate those events. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and like I said, that we, we count this among our blessings that this is already here, but also... I'll tell you, Rotterdam has a very, very strong feeling for innovation um, and experimentation or innovation via experimentation. Um, so we have like a lot of accelerators here, for example, to give you an understanding of why. So we have the port accelerator, we have a healthcare accelerator. So there are all kinds of experimental things going on, which deliver interesting things. Like, for example, one is the Waste Shark. It's an autonomous vehicle <laughs> that swims around the harbor and collects garbage and this is the kind of thing that comes out of it so it's really ingrained in our dna and we always say you know we have sort of this mantra rotterdam make it happen but you can better say yeah if you can't do it in rotterdam you can't do it anywhere because the room is offered here um, so we have things like the floating farm we have things like the smog tower um, all kinds of really unique innovative things um, and actually we're we're tapping into that together with our partners in the very near future, actually next week, Thursday, <laughs> um, we're organizing a series of events called the Rotterdam Experiment. And this is really a sort of uh, Rotterdam partners wide effort to tap into the spirit of Rotterdam, our ability to innovate and experiment, and the commitment and willingness of our partners to change with the times, to, uh, to open up our lab, our living lab, to potential clients to say, you have a specific problem, come here, come to Rotterdam, we'll experiment with you and we'll find the solution. Um, so we're gonna do a series of seven real-time experiments. Uh, it's planned out until the end of next year, so they'll be spaced out comfortably for people to be able to plan them in. Um, and the first one is going to look at the use of virtual reality and augmented reality to tackle some of the issues that conferences are facing in the fully virtual world, uh, to, to take some lessons, some best practices, with us as we hopefully move toward hybrid because um, that's what we anticipate is going to happen we think we're going to go back to hybrid we know for sure just as people ourselves who attend trade shows and, and conferences ourselves we miss being in a big room full of people yep. people talking <laughs> laughing hugging each other because they haven't seen each other in a year we we miss that and and that's our industry our industry is an industry of warm creative exciting and, and fun people um, who serve every other industry in the world. Um, we are the secret power <laughs> underlying everything. That faci we facilitate the, the ambitions that other industries have. We give them the tools they need and we're very much behind the scenes, but, but we should be more visible because our industry has taken such a terrible hit. So yes, we're focusing on the positive, we're focusing on, on, on reskilling or upskilling. We're being creative. We should also use our voices and keep sending the message. Don't ignore us. The events industry is crucial. We are very important to what is happening in the world um, and, and we can prove it. So I think uh, that would be my message, um, as well as please join us during the experiment. <laughs> uh, there, there will be posts floating around um, LinkedIn in the coming days. It's it's very short notice, I know, but uh, that's that's how things are in this virtual world. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we uh, we have interesting speakers, and um, we're really going to do a real life experiment. People will be able to wear the. Some people will wear the gla will wear the, the VR glasses, like the Oculus uh, glasses, and some of us will be just in the two D world. We'll compare. There's a very good chance we'll disprove some experiments. We don't know. It's it's all up in the air. <laughs> well, I think I think that's that's a fantastic bit of innovation and it's also great to share that with, with the industry because 
I mean, we, we found ourselves, we, we haven't massively pushed um, our clients down the virtual route. We're very much a live events agency as much as we can, but we obviously delve a little bit to service clients. But there's, there's a lot of people that have jumped on the virtual bandwagon and, and you, you sometimes have to question how much experience or knowledge they've got. It's almost like they've just jumped on the train and let's just hope it takes me there. So I think it's a fantastic opportunity, like I say, to have an event like that where you can just sit down and explore and have open discussions and find out, you know, rather than just straight away going in and saying, we are now virtual, you know, without any real background yeah. or experience for it, to kind of find your way in there because it is something that's going to be around. Um, obviously, live events will be coming back at some point, but virtual and, and hybrid are going to be around forever now. Uh, they are going to be a significant yeah. part of, of, of the landscape. So we, we've got time to find out and do it right. And I think it's important when you say in terms of how our, our industry has been affected, it's important that we do it right and we come back right and, and, and almost not necessarily prove our worth, but show how great we can be rather than just trying to plug a gap every time. No, I, but I think that's exactly right. And I, uh, la last week we attended an event uh, as sponsors and uh, we, of course, we, we followed all the sessions and they were mainly events agencies or PCOs who are serving a specific segment. And they were basically, we were there as observers in principle. So we were just observing this process where they were sharing with each other best practices, you know, how to do it, how to do virtual. Um, what are the changes you've made? How do you make the choice between postponing um, and waiting until you can go live or indeed taking the jump into virtual? Do you do you use a basic setup like a Zoom, what's already there, and accept you know expect that people will accommodate it, or do you invest in some kind of a bespoke platform? There's so many questions out there, and 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 big tech is playing a big role in all of this, of course, because they see an opportunity. Uh, but you know, not just as a CVB, but as an events professional, um, my heart is with the bricks and mortar of our industry. It's with the innovative venues. It's with the with all the creative people that work in them. It's with the hotels that offer the hospitality. Um, it's the tech is all very very necessary, but I would love to see a very healthy collaboration between big tech and the bricks and mortar uh, aspect of our of our industry, and and allow us to move into that future together, creating a better events industry. So so not not just a different one, but a better one for everyone where there's room for all of us. And how how have you seen? Obviously, it's very difficult to predict, but how have you seen twenty twenty one panning out um, with yourself and, and your and your suppliers and your partners? Um, is there is there a move to sort of get events back and running in some sort of format early next year, or are you or are you very much planning for sort of the summer onwards? No, I think that the, well, the feedback we're getting from from the market is more or less that it's going to be toward the end of twenty one, if at all, um, and. Uh, um, I think I have one RFP <laughs> for 2022, which I'm so grateful for. Thank you. <laughs> you know who you are. Um, but I, I, I think that people are going to err on the side of caution until the, the, the trajectory we're in with the vaccines is mostly done. We need to see how that's going to go. And I, I, you know, I also think that that's okay to a certain degree. Like I said, there are some things that are beyond our control, and, and this is one of them. So um, being creative about how you do things and, and also looking, um, looking at other opportunities in, in maybe a market segment you hadn't looked at before. You know, a lot of um, fellow CVVs as well, we've talked with them about it. They looked at their national market. There has been a drive toward getting uh, your, your national marketplace aware of the services you offer. Speaking just for Rotterdam, um, right after the first peak or around the time of the first peak, we, we sort of paused what we were doing and the organization focused on creating something called, I'm going to say it in Dutch, Rotterdam Zet Door. It's a hashtag, which means Rotterdam endures or Rotterdam continues. And it was a platform where we decided we're just going to share the inspirational stories about how Rotterdamers are stepping up for each other. And it was everything from um, technologies and things happening in the hospital to yoga instructors going up seriously, up onto a, a crane that's normally used to wash windows and giving yoga instructions to elderly people who were out on their balconies who couldn't otherwise leave their apartments. Um, funny stories, inspirational stories, all stories meant to say, we're going to get through this together. And after we came out of that phase, we started to look at the national market. Um, before we went into the second wave, we did see that a lot of our partners had a good amount of business uh, in-house, and it was interesting because the business was coming from local companies, local government, or national, so, you know, within our borders, yeah. and that was really, really encouraging. So we're, we're all fully committed to getting through this phase and, and hopefully 
uh, slowly as things start to open up and as organizers start to say, you know, I need to do something in that part of Europe because I have a, a huge membership base there or I need to develop members there. I don't know. This is always something they have to consider. So I'm going to look for the destination that can host at least people coming from, you know, France, Belgium, Germany with ease and the UK, because honestly, that, that connection uh, with London is fantastic. Um, and that they, they'll say, okay, so we're going to do a hub there and we're not going to try to fly in people from Singapore or whatever, but we're going to focus on the, on the cluster that's there. And that's an interesting cluster. It's a high value cluster. So I, I have good hopes that, that that first phase of focusing on regional meetings is going to pick us up again. It's fantastic to hear such innovation, some positivity, and obviously bringing almost like a community together, like a city together, which, which is great. Um, is there anything yeah. else you'd like to add at all? Well, no, just, just to say that, you know, um, I'm talking a lot about Routed and Pulling Together, but we're all in this together. Obviously, we have colleagues across the industry all over the world that we meet up with at different trade shows that we can't meet up with now. And that always makes me sad, of course. So uh, just a hello to everybody <laughs> that we weren't able to meet at uh, IMAX Frankfurt or, or, or um, IMAX America. IBTM is coming up. It's all virtual. We're all signed on for it. We're so excited. So we're, we, hope, <laughs> we hope we get to see some familiar and uh, appreciated faces. Um, but we're going to, we're going to get there. We just need to be patient and take this opportunity to really reassess what it is we're doing, not forget about some of the other things that the industry has focused on in the past. So the whole thing, the drive towards sustainability, um, this whole discussion about a regenerative events industry, this is the time now to, to make that real and not just, um, you know, an aspiration, but a, a real thing. And, um, and join us, join us during the Rotterdam experiment, uh, 3rd of December, starting at one o'clock. Uh, Rotterdam time. <laughs> um, I'll make sure I'll post it on the, on the video. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will. I will send you some information about it. Maybe you can post it uh, with the with the link. And there will be another six um, starting. The first one will be in February next year. So there's going to be a website launched, and and all the information will be there. And together we can experiment and figure out the way forward. So everyone is invited to join in the experiment. Brilliant. It's been an amazing and positive journey you guys are on and continue to go on. It's really inspiring and an upper real positive message out into the market. So um, thanks for your time. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Same here. Always a pleasure, James. We welcome any feedback and questions in the comment section below and please make sure you follow me on all our social networks.